Hey, what's up everybody? It's Rox and I'm coming to you today with the review for the BET Awards 2013. Did you guys watch last night? I watched and I had a good old time, you guys. You guys know I love uh, reviewing the BET Awards. I honestly believe that BET Awards um, and Deborah Lee, they do a really good job at, at creating a very entertaining show from beginning to end. Um, it might be some it might be some fuckery, but it still is very entertaining. Even better so than the Grammys and American Bill I mean American um, Music Awards and the Billboards and all those. So yeah, it was good. I, I enjoyed it for the whole time except for like the last thirty minutes. It always seems like every award show, I don't care what it is. Um, the last 30 minutes is the most painful. Okay, the shit don't need to go to 11.30. 11 o'clock needs to be the cutoff. I would give the show overall a B- minus because even with all the stuff that they had, they did have some really good performances. I'll talk about it later. Um, for the most part, they didn't have no big one staple performance that we were all sitting around and waiting for. I don't even want to say the B word <laughs> or the J word or the K word, but... You know, usually when we have somebody that we look forward to, okay, the one thing that they focus their, um, you know, all their advertising and everything on, they didn't have it, okay? Like I said, they did have some good moments. We'll talk about it later, but for the most part, it was just like, yeah, it was, it looked like we just all got together, black folks got together, and we had a party. I had a great time on Twitter last night. Shout out to everybody who was on Twitter with me last night. Rocky had a little bit to drink, okay? <laughs> Strawberry Rita is a lie! And the truth ain't in it. That shit had you saying all kind of crazy stuff. I was looking back over my tweets today. I was like, Lord, forgive me for what I said about Forrest Whitaker. I know that if I was in my right mind, I wouldn't have said that about old Mr. Whitaker. Wouldn't I? That, that strawberry that had me so loose at the lips, you guys, for real. So, yeah. um, Y'all, we had a good time on Twitter last night. I did have a really good time live tweeting. I was so busy between tweeting, uh, uh, texting back and forth with my girlfriend, Rashawn, and trying to watch the show and trying to take notes it was a whole lot going on I was exhausted when the shit was over so anyway um we just gonna talk about it I'm gonna try to get through this review in less than 20 minutes okay so you guys time me let's go first off you guys Chris Tucker like I said you guys know how I feel about these first 10 minute monologues and all of that for the most part when Chris Tucker came on I was real nervous he didn't do too bad okay I won't say that he got up there and just flat out bombed but, uh, you know, he said a couple little things that was funny. The audience kind of laughed a little bit. You know, it was nothing that was painful. It wasn't necessarily like falling out your damn seat laughter, but it was still, it was doable. You could tell that he had wrote out a whole bunch of his jokes and he, you know, he was going to talk about people that was in the audience. But you Negroes can't never get nowhere on time, okay? So you fucked up his minutes because you, I mean, his eyes was searching the crowd, like trying to find somebody because he, you know, he had the jokes in his head and then y'all didn't want to cooperate. Now, Chris did look a little odd did anybody notice that i was looking at it, i said what is wrong with chris face something just a little different one of my twitter girls has said that he looked like sydney poitier and i was just like you know what he do kind of you know how sydney poitier always looked like he got that freshly washed and you know put some toner or astringent on his face and then he let the shit just air dry and his face be pulled real real tight and shiny that's exactly how chris tucker looked i don't think he had any work done maybe it's just that he's getting older somebody said that he didn't have any facial hair then i started thinking like has he ever had facial here? Do you guys remember if you had facial hair? Anyways, as the night went on, Chris Tucker kind of, you know, brother man just kind of died a slow death, okay? It wasn't nothing real fast. It just like every time he came on the stage, it was a little bit worse. He started up with the Michael Jackson jokes. And listen, I love Michael Jackson and everything, but you know, Michael Jackson been dead for some time now. We didn't heard all the jokes. We didn't heard all the reminiscence. We didn't heard all the stories. Plus, we had heard this story from Chris Tucker before Michael Jackson had even died. Who the fuck cares about 50 Cent? In the club for real? Uh, Chris Tucker, you tripping. Start talking about Maybach music. I was like, let me look back at my time and see if Maybach music was out at the same time that Michael Jackson was alive. I was just like, no, Chris. You know, just him whole doing the whole Michael Jackson dance things. It was bad. Chris Tucker was determined to get through them jokes. Okay, every time he come out, he was trying to find somebody in the audience to talk about. So, you know, it was, wasn't it funny when he was talking about Miguel and uh, they put the camera on Miguel and that Miguel was laughing so hard. I said, fuck me. Miguel, that shit ain't that damn funny. I mean, you'd have thought Eddie Murphy was up there in his heyday, his raw heyday. And then at the end, Chris Tucker had the nerve to say that he going on tour and for y'all to buy tickets. I was like, God damn it, Chris Tucker, if you don't get up off that stage with that mess, 
<laughs> you must have a damn family dinner because ain't nobody but your mama and them gonna pay any money to come see your ass on anybody's stage the presenters i'm trying to think if there's anybody that was very memorable uh let's see we had gabrielle union and angela bassett um Gabrielle Union is not my favorite these days, so I'm not going to talk about her anymore today, okay? Angela Bassett looked good. She was in that full-on, I'm a cougar, 50 years old, or whatever she is, <laughs> okay? She had that fucking wig on, spiked up high and thick and full. I was just like, girl, you best to do it, girl. All she needed was her leopard print, and she'd have been firmly in the cougar status. Wayne Brady presented. Y'all had that Wayne Brady so twisted up and nervous because y'all black people want to kick him out the club. So, you know, he was about to, <laughs> he was about to get a damn winner before they even said who the nominees was i'll stop being so hard on wayne brady okay he's funny he's talented his album was the bomb if anybody ever bought it back in the day and uh, i say let him on back in the club l debarge love l debarge listen i ain't gonna have it with y'all talking about my l debarge okay i don't give a fuck if he's a little bit on crackhead a tiny tiny little bit love l debarge have all his albums man debarge you know, the whole group, they stay in rotation on my iTunes. I listen to them all the time, okay? So, yeah, I love Elder Barge. I know he got up on stage and he had a little bit of the mush mouth. Nobody know what he said. That man said, he said, we're going to say, and then the people perform as a silent. I said, what? Yeah, we don't know what you said, El, but it's still all right with me. Got to talk about Megan Good and that dress. She got up there with Lala, honey. Ain't nobody paid, not no bit of attention to a uh, 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 Lala. Now, Megan Good looked beautiful. She looked sexy. She looked hot. Y'all know for a fact them deaconesses was on that phone last night and was beside themselves. <laughs> and Megan Good is insisting on getting her ass whooped by Sister Jones. You know they was on the phone like, did you see us? First Lady Good up on that television. I told her, I said, Megan, don't you show up on that stage turning up like that. Her breasts were so big, it almost went down to her belly button. I said, Lord, Harold, turn the channel. They're going to fucking have a damn meeting about Megan tomorrow <laughs> in Bible study. They had a couple of casts show up, you know, to do some presenting. They had Think Like a Man and um, Real Husbands of Hollywood or whatever it's called, you know. Look, Kevin Hart, I do love Kevin Hart. I think he's funny, but what is it about Kevin that I can only take him in real teeny eeny weeny doses? He has gotten to be so crunk all the time. Like, I understand he was excited and it was like turn up and, you know, whatever it was. But, yeah, something about him. I, I almost need a chaser after Kevin Hart. Like, somebody to come in and explain what the fuck just happened on a goddamn screen. <laughs> He's just doing the most. I'm going to go see his little movie tomorrow, you know, when it comes out. Because I know it's going to be funny and everything. I do like Kevin Hart. But, yeah, just, ooh, he is just the most. Is Bobby Brown taking um, um Robin Thicke's place on uh, Real House Husbands of Hollywood or whatever the fuck the name? the show is i was just like okay that's a good look for bobby bobby needs some work bobby actually looked good last night he got that deep i've been on drugs for a long time voice you know his shit is real deep like this when he talk <laughs> i was just like that's all right bobby we know what it used to be we had the best man cast come out and uh side note did you guys see on the pre-show when nia long shaded the fuck out of kendrick lamar i was like well damn i had missed it so i had to rewind it but yeah he tried to give her a hug and she was kind of looking at him like nigga who is you get away Away from me they showed the cast for the game and uh, it was interesting it was only a few of them it was all the ones that weren't important except for Malik and I guess you could say Brandy is a bigger part of the cast but yeah none of the none of the big names on the show was even there so I was just looking at all them like fuck what the <laughs> who feel like looking at them well, I don't even know what the new boy name is the big tall one we just call him young man now you guys I'm gonna run down real quickly for you guys the 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 um winners for the night so I was surprised. They actually showed quite a few uh, categories. Not like that damn BET Hip Hop Awards where they showed three. Best R&B pop artist was Miguel. Okay, y'all know Miguel was nervous. Okay, because he had just went off on you niggas not too long ago for pushing them out and telling them, saying that, you know, we the most judgmental. And then he got to get up here and thank y'all for award. But Miguel was just like, uh, hey. Best new artist and best hip hop male was Kendrick Lamar. And I was like, yeah, this is his night. You know, I love me some Kendrick Lamar. I told you guys about that a long time ago. His CD is another one that stays in constant rotation 
rotation on the iTunes playlist. My girlfriend Rashawn said the nigga looked like a cabbage patch. And I was like, girl, you ain't never lied. If you don't look like that cabbage patch, y'all remember the one that just had the hair right here? The rest of it was real bald and the ears stuck out. I was like, dead on Kendrick Lamar, okay? <laughs> the Young Stars Award was Gabby Douglas. She's the Olympic star, okay? And y'all, we love Gabby Douglas. God bless her heart. Uh, I y'all done fucked her up so much talking about her hair back in the day and everything. Now she get up on these shows. She be having too much makeup on. She, the makeup, like she's so young, I feel like the makeup ages her. She had on this bright red lipstick, a lot of eyeliner. It was just wrong. One of y'all makeup artists that be on Instagram, you know, it's about 50 trillion of y'all out there. Somebody get with Gabby and get the youngness back to the to this face, please. Best gospel artist was Mary Mary. And uh, you guys, if you don't know already, their father just passed. Um, so rest in peace to Elder Atkins. He was only 56 years old. I don't really know what happened. Um, they haven't said. I don't even know if he was really sick. You know, we saw him on the show all the time, and, you know, we didn't know if anything was wrong with him, but just real sad. So, yeah, RIP to him, but they did win Best Gospel Artist. They weren't there, of course. Best Actor was Jamie Foxx, um, who got up there, y'all, and tried to get deep. Jamie Foxx, ever since he won the fucking Academy Awards, he always want to get up there with a lesson. It's just like, Jamie, get your ass. Get the damn award and get on somewhere. He got to calling y'all Jangos and shit. I was like, uh, excuse me, uh, Jamie. I am not a Django. Fuck that slave shit. I worked real hard to get to where I am. <laughs> he was just like, you a Django, Jay-Z a Django, Kanye West a Django, 2 Chains a Django. I said, what the fuck is you talking about? Django is a movie. Did you know that that wasn't real, Jamie? Best hip-hop female was... Was Nicki Minaj and did we think anybody else was gonna win against her? <laughs> Best collaboration is ASAP Rocky, Drake, 2 Chains, and Kendrick Lamar for Bad Bitches, okay? I love Bad Bitches, that my fucking problem. And if, and yeah, I like to fuck that in my, and yeah, I like to fuck a, what is the words? I like to fucking, that's my fucking problem. Is that it? I love Bad Bitches, that my fucking problem. And yeah, I like to fucking, that's my fucking, that don't sound right. What is it? Okay, anyway, let me just keep going. Viewer's Choice is Drake started from the bottom, okay? And I never understood why that song was such a hit anyway. You know us black people. We will latch on to a saying and just use it to death. So folks just love started from the bottom, now we here. Now it's, it's levels to this shit. <laughs> we gonna run that into the dirt next, okay? If you just be on Instagram, all you got to do is be on Instagram and Twitter and you will learn all the new black sayings like pronto. And the best movie was Think Like a Man, and that was cool. Y'all, we all know that BET give awards to whoever whoever is there. <laughs> we got Think Like a Man, we got that shit going up against all these other movies. No, it was just because they was there, and they was all black, and they had to go on and give them the damn award. So, performances. It opened with Chris Brown, and he did okay. I mean, it wasn't nothing like, I used to really love to see Chris Brown perform, and it was just all right. I, maybe it's because the songs that, you know, ain't really nothing exciting out for him right now. He did a little song with Lee, and I was just like, all right, Chris, don't get that damn Drake all riled up, okay? Be a light-skinned fight up on this stage. Robin Thicke performed Blurred Lines, okay? Robin Thicke and Paula Patton was on that molly. I don't give a fuck what nobody said. What the fuck is we so giggly and happy about? Now, first of all, before the thing on the on the pre-award show, she was just laughing and he was laughing. Her hair was fucked up. I was just like, all right, Thicke slash Pattons. I'm gonna need y'all to quit fucking around with the drugs before you got to be on national television. That bitch was touching all on everybody and looking at them and flirting and blinking her I was like, somebody get Paula. Kendrick Lamar performed, and uh, y'all, like I said, I love me some Kendrick Lamar, and, uh, you know, he was jamming. He did that song, rock, 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 tum, something, something, then it's something, my nigga, and chuck it where you funds, man, something, my nigga. What's the song? <laughs> that shit be jamming. It gets a real pumped. I'm gonna listen to that in a few minutes. He sang like a medley of songs, so he sang that song. Of course, he sang Bitch Don't Kill My Vibe, and let's just talk about bitch don't kill my vibe shall we okay so he had miss erica badu come out and y'all we love everything erica badu erica came out there in her fucking i'm running to the grocery store clothes she can't be bothered with a stylist she got on her goddamn um uh, leggings and a damn t-shirt don't shit match she is in her full scarecrow swag she got the hat on she looked like somebody that fucking cleared out the brush the denman brush with some blonde hair they glued that shit right here in the front and uh, she's got the freckles and everything that erica badu i'm telling you whatever she feel that day that's just what she does you gotta love her for that she's singing the song 
everybody really enjoyed it but i was just sort of like oh okay you know erica badu she she's always just gonna be erica badu okay when she got finished with the saga they was walking back to the little makeshift house she put all her might into that big ass wobbly booty walk <laughs> that she could okay that fucking ass is so damn big it looked like it 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 take care of the, the, the homeless people when it's cold like they just climb in there they be like we going to Erica's that shit is so big and wobbly I used to wear yoga pants and I'm telling you my mother would have died if she saw Erica's booty last night my mom hated when I would wear yoga pants and like with a, like a g-string or something because you know my butt has a tendency to jiggle and my mom was a she believed totally in a girdle she'd be like Roxanne you need to put a girdle on I was just like mom ain't nobody got no damn time for no girdle the hell I'm looking like wearing a girdle under my, my damn stretch pants. <laughs> my mom's ass and legs and shit was tight. Ask anybody who know Ruby, okay? She ain't, she wasn't one for all that movement. That ass of Erica's was a popular hashtag last night. R. Kelly, now you guys know R. Kelly never disappoints. I loves me some R. Kelly, okay? He just got a little bit of everything. He got a little bit of the drama. He got a little bit of sexy. He got a little bit of the nasty. He got a whole lot of talent. He brings all that together. Entertains us so well. I mean, R. Kelly has so many hits, you guys. When I went to his concert, I'm telling you, I screamed so much till I was dizzy. He has so many songs. You don't even remember half of the songs. The TP3 Days and the all... Man, some of them... Man, what? He just kind of was on the show last night. And really, literally, he only sang like a couple of lines. So everybody... It was just enough for everybody to be like, hey! And then it was like, move on to the next song. He probably did about six, seven, eight songs. Just like a couple of lines. Um, of course, we all loved when he sang um, um, Bump and Grind just the beginning. I was just like, shit, he could just sang that whole song. I would have been fine. And that's when you know a true artist. When an artist can get up there and sing songs from fucking 20 years ago. Okay, because Bump and Grind is almost 20 years if it's not 20 years old. Okay, so yeah. Very entertaining. Okay, I love me some R. Kelly. I don't care if he pees on people and all of that. Did you guys peep the jacket that he had on? That shit was studded everywhere. The hat and the... I was like, fuck, ain't nobody gonna want to stand next to R. Kelly. His ass is a goddamn weapon. <laughs> you gonna fuck around and let all the damn uh, air out the balloons backstage they'd be like watch r kelly make sure he don't go over there now mariah carey performed you guys and uh, she had no introduction which she never really does need once she is a true legend i was so perplexed about this song with miguel mariah carey and young jeezy what type of collaboration is this? this is a real song i guess that they play on the radio i have never heard it i i heard something about miguel and mariah carey having a song together but yeah i don't i don't want to never see young jeezy in a song with mariah carey ever again okay it just it it don't gel that shit is like pouring sugar in some moet because you know you want the shit to be sweeter no just don't drink it yeah that's the same with i don't want to see them two together they don't go together i blame nick cannon now they did really go all out for her little set it was chandeliers everywhere it's very beautiful very glamorous but yeah i just i could not get the song i'm telling you i don't understand that song you guys see when she was about to leave the stage when they was bringing the little gold thing back around she gave you about 15 poses i was just like that mariah care i swear the fairy dust around her just don't never settle it just stay in the air just glittery and shit all <laughs> around her and then you know since jeezy was already out there they let him do rp which is my jam you guys know that he just did like a quick verse and uh the shit got real hot up there everything turned to flames and and i got hot fuck y'all know i'm still in a hot ass house finally about to get my air conditioning fixed like in these next couple of days but yeah y'all know it's been real rough so yeah that little section right there i was ready for it to be over miguel performed and y'all know y'all was nervous she was worried for mr miguel now we was really happy to see that he was up on some platform up high he had on a goddamn hair coat that shit was flat ironed to the most straight okay he was out there giving us all his prince glory somebody was like prince on twitter i was just like yeah he wishes y'all know they had to talk with miguel and like listen we don't care how much the spirit moves you you keep your ass firmly planted on the ground because y'all know that damn Miguel. If he ain't jumping, he falling. Clumsy fucker. <laughs> Shit. He been fucked around and jumped over there on Deborah Lee's throat and then what? Okay, it's your ass, Miguel. But the best part of the night, you guys, hands down, was the Charlie Wilson tribute. Okay? Enjoyed it thoroughly. This is the sign of of a true legend okay somebody who can come back and still be relevant 30 40 years later i mean do you know that the gap band my parents was listening to the gap band 
he looked great okay he had got rid of all them fucking braids whatever he was going through some years ago you know and he got him a nice little you know cut short haircut and red jacket was it i was like fuck whoever styled charlie wilson they had that shit right last night and it was really really good to see him up there now justin timberlake is up there you guys and i loves me some justin timberlake oh he gets the everything going i love him like an ex-boyfriend like i didn't want to break up with him <laughs> like one of them yes just yes just yes the tribute starts who's singing in the tribute well first we have india Irie. i don't even remember what the song was that india Irie uh was singing she got up there you know she had her guitar everything she, she was singing the song okay and it was nice enough okay somewhere along the line she got into the song really good put that damn guitar down and got the mic and here i had to sit up there and look at india Irie's fat puss camel toe for like the whole rest of the time i couldn't even concentrate <laughs> what y'all want me to do with this shit up there like india Irie now you know that shit was slicing all up on one side i was like girl you gonna get an infection i don't know why we insist on wearing these unitards y'all no cut it out jamie fox comes out and he sings um my heart is yearning for your love and how about oh miss jada was over there singing over there in the chair i was like see to what you know about that song she was like well we have time you opb having parties y'all always play that song so i know that song <laughs> I was just like, girl, you best to sing it. That shit is the for real cha-cha song. I swear, when 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 yearning for your love, come on, you can't help but cha-cha. That's a fucking whole cha-cha the whole time. Stevie comes out, and I ain't gonna say nothing because I told y'all last week. Then I told y'all on top of the blog what was gonna happen. So yeah, Stevie Wonder got out there, but BT wasn't here for it, y'all. Okay, because by the time they didn't got Mr. Stevie Wonder and brought him down to his seat and shit, the nigga had one verse in the chorus, and that was it. And that was enough time for him to fuck the lyrics up. I was like, he was scatting, and I told you guys, didn't I? Man, y'all know y'all ain't right this morning on fucking Instagram. Somebody had posted that Stevie Wonder had emojis on his damn jacket. <laughs> <laughs> y'all know y'all ain't shit then when charlie uh wilson performed yeah that was it it was just it was just a good old time you guys i got up and danced they, he sang the song with jt something 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 some, some, something 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 that song be jamming i was like oh i forgot all about that song and then they did beautiful um that was with snoop lion uh, and pharrell and uh, y'all know beautiful used to be the jam beautiful i just want you to know you're my favorite girl i think that's actually the name of the words not beautiful but yeah that song um that fucking charlie wilson was getting into the groove i was just like fuck y'all gonna make me start sweating in this hot ass house they did uh you dropped a bomb on me they did outstanding i'm telling you it was a party for 10 good damn minutes hands down best time of the whole entire show i did give pharrell a side eye okay because them fucking rolled up pants but look i'm not gonna i'm not even gonna shade pharrell today okay because pharrell has always been a little different we gonna give him a pass but i saw them damn rolled up pants and them light them fucking light skinny ankles j cole performs that was pretty chill nothing too exciting you know saying his songs or whatever um um tamala man which was great i always enjoy a good gospel performance because with all these heathens within one room sometimes we just need the lord to shine down upon us so tamala man was the required you know sanctified and holy ghost field section of the show that we needed sierra performed you guys and i was disappointed now first of all what the hell was going on with Sierra's hair? Sierra has been getting that hair so right for like this whole year. Her hair has been beautiful. It's been blonde. It's been, you know, the, the bob and all of that. I've been loving Sierra's hair. Her video for a body party was great. I was just like, she is about to do it. Come back and on. And then she get up on that stage and the hair is just up. I don't even know a better way to describe it. It looked like she got into one of them wind tunnels. You know how you get in there and the wind come up and then it'd be the money be flying everywhere and you be trying to reach for the money and shit. And all the hair just be up in the aisle just like, no, CC, no. And I was going to let that slide because I was like, she's going to do really good with this song. So she did the song with Nicki Minaj and that was pretty cool. I actually liked the video. The video was really, really good. They did um, show that at the pre-show. Y'all saw when Sierra and and um, uh, Bow Wow and Angie was all, Angela, Angela Simmons was all up on that stage together. And I was cracking up because I was just like, Bobby, Bobby, what the fuck is his name? Bow Wow was over there just like, I'm going to shut up. I ain't going to say shit. Them two was over there. It was hilarious. She sang Body Party and it was just, <sighs> you guys, 
this was her moment. She could have had a, a, a Beyonce moment, a Crazy in Love, you know, the performance of Crazy in Love that I still remember that Beyonce had. She could have had it because that song has been such a hit for her. She could have got up there and been turned on the sexy and turned on the burlesque and really did a lot and have some men out there in chairs and do the dance for us and keep it tasteful but make it sexy. I mean, fuck, do I need to do the damn treatments for her? She gets out there, it's still that halfway um, stripper, male stripper. You know how she dances. I was just like, mm, Sierra, she like old boy from life, okay? She just can't get right. <laughs> they had the dance hall section, the reggae section, Elephant Man and Beanie Man and uh, Shabba Ranks. Was it Beanie Man up there? Am I talking too much? I know Shabba Ranks and Elephant Man. Anyway, they was all up there and it was a good time. You guys, it catapulted me right back to 1992 where Roxanne had her patch of braids. I'm going to try to find my pictures of me when I had my braids and put it on Instagram for y'all. But yeah, it was a good old time. Boy, 2 chains, you guys, he performed that Feds Watching or whatever it's called. For some reason, that shit sound like Cisco Kid was a friend of mine. Am I the only one that hears that? I don't know why. It, the music, I don't know if it's something in the beat or what. And he sang, um, um, was it Bad Bitches? I think that was Bad Bitches with ASAP Rocky and, and um, Drake and, and, and Kendrick Lamar or whatever. I don't think Drake was there, but you guys, I just... ASAP Rocky, even with the stupid shit that he didn't say, I kind of have a little old lady crush on ASAP Rocky. He kind of cute to me. Damn two chains. He had on a fucking fringe jacket and he had his damn locks down and everything was long and flowing and flying all over. I was like, he looked just like a damn Choctaw Indian up there. <laughs> Lastly, um, Janelle Monet, who I love to death, who is such a beautiful girl, who is such a cute girl. She's the face of uh, Cover Girl and rightly so. I just really want her to be able to be bigger. But I think the fact that she don't show up on stage in a fucking leotard, and some tights, and some heels like somebody else we already know, that it's harder for her to get over that edge, okay? People are, are, don't look at her sexually and unfortunately sometimes the sexuality of an artist will overshine the talent she did kind of sexy it up yesterday she didn't got rid of them fucking tuxedo pants and she got her some tuxedo leggings her body is in really nice shape and she kept them legs open and she was dancing and everything i was like all right janelle i see you kind of trying to do a little something extra erica badu come out and i guess erica then got backstage and saw all the shit that was the uproar behind that ass so she had a lab coat on couldn't see shit okay ass was covered fixed that ass, okay, was you mad? <laughs> All right, you guys, that's it. This video is so long. I swear I tried to get it down. I'm going to try to edit some shit out. We're going to see how it goes. But anyway, you guys, would you guys remember to rate, comment, and subscribe to my channel, I'm as Rocks. My channel is Forrest Rocks, and everything else I do will be in the bottom bar below. All right. All right, so I hope that you guys have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day, and I plan on doing the same. Until next time, Rockstars. Bye.